Good morning, good evening and good night. My name is Manuel Castro Cordova and I'm going to introduce the film by Jean-Marie Straub and Daniel Ouellette, The Bridegroom, The Comedian and The Pimp. I should first of all say as a disclaimer that it's very difficult to say anything new or original about this film, especially considering that the greatest, perhaps one of the greatest experts on this film is at the moment leading your seminar. In addition, I should also note that this film is so rich and complex that to trace all its intertext, its symbols, its allegories is way beyond the scope of this presentation. I would like, however, to refer to a few texts that produce such a wholesome analysis of the film, particularly a chapter in a book called Landscapes of Resistance and another chapter in a book called The Brechtian Aspect of Radical Cinema. Both of these are listed in the bibliography section of the handout and both of them are available online. I will attempt to at least make sense of this film, however superficially. In this presentation, I will firstly summarize the main characteristics of Straub and Ouellette's style. I will then start analyzing the film. Instead of trying to impose an overarching argument over the whole of the film, I will make a somewhat fragmented commentary on different sections and passages, and I will particularly focus on the introduction of St. John of the Cross's poetry. Jean-Marie Straub and Daniel Ouellette are a pair of French-born directors who made dozens of films between 1963 and 2006. If we were to boil down the complex filmography of these two directors, we will find two main traits in the very unique and peculiar style. Firstly, they tend to use literary texts as the basis and the source of the narratives. The films are richly intertextual and they constantly quote other texts. Secondly, the performance of the actors on their films is always overly anti-naturalistic. They are perhaps, alongside Godard, the most representative directors who have adapted Brecht's ideas about performance into the world of film. Thus the films produce a constant alienation and defamiliarization of objects, attitudes and behaviors. We can find these characteristics already in our film, The Bridegroom, The Comedian and The Pimp, in a somewhat latent or undeveloped manner. It is an early work, the fourth film, in which the distinct style is not completely formed. It was released in the same years as Herzog's Last Words in 1968. According to Straub, there were two sources of inspiration that triggered the idea of this film. Firstly, the French May, 1968, and secondly, a news items which depicted the relationships between a former prostitute and a black man. It could be said then that this film has its origins in the intersections between issues of race, sex work, revolution and class struggle. It is a film divided into four sections. The first section, the critics, shows a wall with a graffiti which says Stupid old Germany. I hate it over here. I hope I can go soon. One is tempted to ask to go where? Perhaps to Eastern Germany? Or perhaps towards Western, more capitalist societies? Then comes section two, which is a long shot from a car showing an industrial area of Munich at night. We make out the factories and the warehouses on the background and the shadowy figures of sex workers on the streets. Perhaps we can read here a critique of industrialized societies, a critique of the way they commodify the body and introduce the body into the processes of work and labor. The sex workers film against the industrial landscapes are literally just opposed to the world of the factory. It is up to debate whether Straub and Willett are attempting to make a negative critique of sex work, depicting it merely as another form of capitalist exploitation. The introduction of Bach's religious music is meant to clash with these mundane and urban images. This contrast somehow distances the spectator, allowing a more critical assessment of the images on the screen. We have here one instance of the Brechtian alienation effect, which is so characteristic of the director's style. Section 3 shows Straub's eight-minute adaptation of Ferdinand Brigner's Pains of Youth, represented at Munich's Action Theatre in 1968. There's a quote from Mao on the background, again perhaps a link to the politicized context of May 68. We see 
Fassbinder, playing the character of Freda, a dissolute, drunk and destructive character. The acting in this section is the epitome of Brecht's ideas about performance, as he puts it in a quote that you can find in the Kostbach. Instead of wanting to create the impression that he is improvising, the actor should rather show what the truth is. He is quoting. There's here an absolute distance between character and actor. The actor's work consists precisely in marking that distance. It was this play and this particularly approach to performance which fascinated Fassbender, and it would be fruitful in the following weeks to relate his films, especially the early ones, to this play. Section 4 shows James, who is presumably in love with Lilith, a prostitute, being chased by her pimp. Lilith and James then get married, drive home, addressing each other with lines from the poetry of St. John of the Cross. They find her pimp, played by Van der Spinder, waiting for them inside the house. Lilith kills him and the film concludes, as in other films by Swap and Ouellette, framing nature from a window. In the literature you can find a thorough analysis of the different intertext and quotes of this gangster and thriller influenced section. However, while I was preparing this presentation I was somewhat surprised that most of the main scholars overlooked the choice of poetry. Not many address why do the directors choose the poetry of St. John of the Cross. Given that it has received relatively little attention, I would like to give here a tentative response to this question. St. John of the Cross was a 16th century mystic and Spanish poet. He was son of conversos. That is to say, he was born in a family of former Jews who had to convert to Catholicism. Conversos aroused racial animosity, if not hatred, in 16th century Spain. They were regularly prosecuted, chased, and ceremoniously burned in autos de fe by the religious authorities. San John of the Cross was also chased and prosecuted, but not for ethnic reasons. It was because he participated in the reformation of the Order of the Carmelites alongside Saint Teresa de Jesus. The Orthodox Carmelites saw so in this reformation an insulting instance of heresy. San John of the Cross was destroyed and jailed. He eventually managed to flee and run away to South Spain. I mentioned San John's biography because there's an evident parallel between him and the character of James. Both belong to ethnic minorities which suffered institutional prosecution and widespread racism, like San John's relation to Teresa de Jesus. James' relation to her lover, Lilith, is the cause of his being chased. And finally, both are individuals fleeing, trying to escape and run away. Straub and Willet thus quote St. John of the Cross not only for the poetic aspect of his work but also as a way to reactualize and relate St. John's political and ethnic context to the issues and problematics of the present. There's many things left to be said about this film which I cannot tackle in 10 minutes. For instance, why does the camera frame the whole of the third section from the side and not frontally. Then the characters of the third section are trapped in the bourgeois apartment. James and Lily want to escape and free themselves. Patricia, the person who wrote the graffiti, also wants to somehow run away from Germany. We have seen in the films from the GDR a constant representation of images of entrapment. How do those images differ with the images of entrapment that we see in this one film? What does it mean to be trapped in a Western capitalist society? How is the urban world represented as opposed to the natural world? Furthermore, Straub claimed that this was his most political film. Where do you find this alleged radical political engagement? I would like to conclude by reciting in Spanish the lines from St. John of the Cross quoted in the scene where James and Lilith arrive at the door of their apartment. This way you might have a sense of the musicality of St. John's poetry, whom I believe personally to be the best poet in the Spanish language. Ya que el tiempo era llegado en que hacerse convenía el rescate de la esposa que en duro yugo servía, debajo de aquella ley que Moisés dado la vía, el padre con amor tierno de esta manera decía, ya ves, hijo, que a tu esposa, a tu imagen hecho había, y en lo que a ti se parece, 
contigo bien convenía. Pues ya sin elegido, de hoy más no fuere vista en hallada, diréis que me he perdido, que andando enamorada, me hice perdidiza y fui ganada.